Greetings ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to my real board series. I know I haven't had it out in a very, very long time. The reason being is because I was just completely upset with the quality, or lack thereof, of the camera I was using. Now after a few hit and miss cameras and a few returns, and uh, I'm not going to go into all of it, I finally have a camera that I have been enjoying. Did a few test streams uh, with it and it seemed to go relatively okay. I think I finally have the right camera for my real board series. The following video is from a stream I did. I, for those of you who do not know, I now also stream on Sundays for, it's a little bit of a shorter stream, an hour, two, three, something along those lines, where I go over a game or games that I wouldn't necessarily be able to cover during my regular lecture series. I go over these games on a real board, uh, live for you guys, so you can go follow along, ask questions, all that sort of good stuff. I'll be uploading those games regularly onto the YouTube channel, as well as shorties and other games I just feel like going over on a real board. Sorry it's been a while since the last video, I know some of you guys really 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 enjoy these real board series, they'll be coming back and making a regular appearance starting today. Hope you guys enjoy. I think you really like the game, and I'll see you guys next time. Take care everybody. Let's go over the game. So today, I decided that we are going to go over a Ghoulie game. Now, you might ask yourself, who is Ghoulie? And you would be forgiven completely for the question. Haven't really heard a whole lot from uh, Ghoulie nowadays, to be completely fair. Before Ghoulie, it was, or sorry, um, right now I should say, it is all about Mr. KG and him being number one in China. Before him, it was Kangji and he was number one in China. And if we go even further back, we'd have to go back to Guli. However, 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 maybe, 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 you haven't been around for Guli. But I was. Guli was one of the top players in China at the time in which I started learning Go. So, like, the top players I studied, it was Guli, it was Li Sedol, it was Yi Cheng Ho, now, sadly, Guli has fallen off a little bit uh, since then, but he's still a... I, th I want to say he's still a fairly strong uh, name in China. Yup, yup, yup. He's currently ranked 24th in uh, on the global scale currently on go for go which is still good. Don't get me wrong. Top 25 is still pretty good. Uh, still pretty good. But, you know, when you consider that he used to be number one, you know, dropping to 24 is... Eh, you know, it, it, it's a thing. It's a thing. But still definitely a player worth examining. That's the fate of the players who lose their Jibango. Could be. Could be. So alright, as you can see, Guli is white and his opponent is black. We have black opening up with the 3-4 in the... Uh, well, can't give you a direction, sorry. White opens up with a 4-4 in the corner saying, you know what, I don't care if potentially you get to approach me and then fall back into a Chinese variation later on. You can uh, get orthodox if you'd like. You can take the open corner. You can do whatever your little heart desires. Black says, I'm interested in dual 3-4 points today. Whoops. Black does not get to play twice. White takes a 3-4 for himself. Time for the big decision. This is our little world on this go board, and we have to make the big decisions. Our first big decision is going to be, do we approach to try to make a framework, or do we go for territory? Those kind of really simple decisions are what you want to be thinking about in your game. Not necessarily what Yoseki you want to pick and what part of the board uh, and that sort of thing. Start off simply, very, very simply. Do I want to play a territorial game or do I want to play potentially an influential game? If we approach, we say maybe we're going to play an influential game because we might be able to take something like a framework for ourselves. Black and close is low, saying maybe I'm going to play a territorial game this, this time. 
Now, those of you familiar with opening will not be surprised in the slightest when white approaches high in the 3-4. That's about as standard as you can get nowadays. I do want to reiterate, because I always see this when I'm looking at uh, DDK games and what have you, uh, some people splitting, not such a great idea, because again, I want to point out that you are inviting some kind of enclosure for your opponent, followed by maybe an extension, which is usually the exact thing you were trying to avoid when you split him like so. So we're going to approach. Next big decision in our world for black, we have to decide how we're going to play next. Are we going to continue the territorial game? Or are we going to mix things up and say, maybe I'm going to play an influential game. Maybe I can use, um, maybe, maybe I can use this enclosure to expand. So that's the next big decision that we have in our little world. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? Black plays super standard and decides to take territory. Now it's white's decisions that must be made. Are we going to back off? Or are we going to drop down? Because we're going to respond. We're absolutely going to respond. There's nothing really larger on the board right now than the fact that our stone's under attack. Because we've got corner fine, corner fine. Uh, can't approach uh, this corner right now. So this is where all the this is where all the action's happening. He says I do not want influence. I'm just going to back off right now, like so. Now here's where things start turning interesting immediately. If black responds with let's say playing here, then we could probably all expect white to approach the or to attach to the corner now in an effort to make this area as large as fast as humanly possible, right? You attach and then maybe your opponent plays here and you back off. I keep hitting that for ah. Keep trying to give black two different moves. And then maybe we play here, and maybe our opponent plays there, and then maybe we opponent, maybe we extend out, and then maybe we get to play something like something like so. You know, just to build up as quick as we possibly can. That's something that we could do. That's that's, an, that's a variation that we can expect here. But black throws us for a bit of a loop. He says, all right, white defended. I'm going to make this game a bit more interesting and approach. So now there are variations all over the place. I mean, we can follow up here in the future. We can follow up here in the future. Um, maybe we can still do that in the future. Kind of depends on how we respond here. Are we going to go for a pincer? Are we going to put pressure on? Are we going to back off and just try to get Sente to make a follow-up? A lot of, lot of, lot of questions. A lot of, lot of potential here now, suddenly, for White. He must prove now that he has good direction of play. So White says, OK, I'm going to pincer. Two space high. Now, I want to point out, especially to the Q players in the audience, that we should all have an idea on what variation makes us comfortable here as black. Like, no matter how your opponent pincers, we should always have at least one variation that we're comfortable with. And the two space high is a very, very common pincer. The question is, what variations are you comfortable with right now? What variations are you comfortable Because there are a lot. There are a lot. There's this, for example. A bit older style, where we're just going to try to settle in this kind of shape. There's the leaning, where we're going to try and get this kind of thing going on. 
this kind of shape when our opponent responds. We're going to get a little bit of wall and try to settle. Uh, what else is there? What else is there? Um, there's attacking. There's the aggressive variations. And hello, natural Tanuki and Stikersan. Uh, I don't know any variations. I should always have at least one. I should always have at least one. Doesn't have to be. Doesn't have to be really long. Don't have to have, remember variations that are like thirty moves in length. Complicated enough to make the Taisha completely embarrassed. I should always have one. Black says, I'm going to go back and finish here. Unusual choice. White continues along his merry little way. Now the question that resides in our head is, what are we, what are we doing here? Because when Black played, he knew he was inviting a return to this variation. So how is he going to use this together? Let's wait and see. Plays the Hane, white backs off clearly. Expected normal variation, we're just taking uh, territory in the corner. White turns. Black gets some territory. Looks like he's gonna have Sente out of this exchange because we're not really fighting. Backed off as we envisioned previously, so we have, we have, uh, we have uh, what is it, Sente now. He approached as a probe, indeed. That is true. He wanted to know how his opponent was going to respond. He got himself the answer. But the question is, how is he going to follow up once he has Sente? Is he going to still go back into a var- Is he still going to go back into a variation? Don't know. Don't know. Black decides to do something very fun and go into an attacking variation. He's pincering the pincer. All right. So things you should note about this uh, attempt is we would like to link up underneath. Things to note about this attempt, we would like to link up underneath if at all possible. So things you might want to consider for white is playing something like this to keep a lot of pressure on uh, both stones. No link up under, they both need a base, that could be an interesting uh, way to start a fight. Now what's fun about Guli's move here is despite the fact that I th think he was one of the people he was one of the people that really liked this variation, this, this attacking variation for black. He was in a lot of his games. So he knows exactly what his opponent wants to do. And he knows the very common responses to it. That said, he still encloses for himself rather than prevent it. Interesting decision. Black tries to grow. Make himself nice and strong. Bladavia smells a bit of blood in the water. Okay. Now normally after this sequence, we would play here to settle, and then white would have sente. Because despite the fact that this push and the cut does work, because you can push and cut and then take, you know, stones, or you can like ladder that stone depending on how you do it. Black says, I'm going to jump out now and try to profit. What would you guys do here? 
This is actually a very, very important uh, decision to make. And the reason why it's an important decision to make is you have to figure there are three options here that you can make. I think about three. About three. Maybe, maybe more. Maybe there's a fourth. Okay, there's a fourth variation too. So, four options. Option number one, we can play away and take a big point for ourselves. The danger here is maybe this continues to grow. Maybe our opponent caps and we respond, and then maybe our opponent continues to lean and we respond. But maybe our opponent uh, finds like some sente moves here first, and like we respond to that. So we can maybe this grows. Maybe this grows. Right? Maybe. Maybe not. Uh, get that out there too. Thank you. So, the question is, what are we going to do? Option one. Option two is to jump out. We can jump out. Jumping out is fine. Only problem with jumping out is that it's a little bit on the Gote side. You'll notice that this move was Gote. This move coming out also Gote. Sleeve hit stone. Not good. So those are two options. Um, what is the next option? Next option is we could say, you know what, that's, that's okay. I'm fine with that. I'm just going to try to sacrifice it. See if I can't maybe get some forcing moves in here, but we can envision the wall that we get from it, like Hane and extending and whatnot. And then at best we're going to try to go here, I guess. So we sacrifice and maybe try to build, or if we can larger wall, maybe we could do something like that. That's, that's another one that we could try. And option, I want to say four. I think we're on option four. Is we can try to come out, but we can come out in sente. We're gonna try to come out in Sente that we need forcing moves. So do we have any forcing moves in this lovely area? And we have one. We have one. Because this is a common shape point for this uh, wall, right? Because of the cutting point. So White takes it for himself. He's being a bit aggressive. Oh, hello, welcome to stream. Always like them first time watchers. So white tides play in sente. White tides of play move in sente. Black, because he is a fighter, he is a professional. He is a fighter. He's gonna try and keep things nice and calm and defend himself. But he's also defending himself in sente. Because the push and the cut here now is really, really big. As is the... The double Hane, right? As is double Hane. So white says, okay, that's Sente. Suddenly we have pressure on our group again. So black says, I'm going to try to get some more Sente here. Try and try and try and. You'll notice with these nice, simple moves, we have also, if we were to draw an imaginary line between these stones, we've also put uh, white behind a little sector line, right? He's a little bit behind enemy lines now. So black says it's time to attack you. Now things are starting to get fun. White jumps out. Black says, I do not want to be surrounded. He's also saying, I don't want to just try and connect up underneath. This would be bad. This would be bad form. I mean, you rose nice and aggressively. You strengthened yourself nice and aggressively. And now we're attacking nice and aggressively. 
But the minute our group's in danger, if we just back off and cower and just try to connect, then our opponent gets a lot. Our opponent gets a lot for himself. And that's, that's bad, because now, I mean, your opponent can turn here. Uh, maybe your opponent can get some more middle stuff happening. Maybe that's just completely Gote, and we can go and take a large point for ourselves. So new. We are not going to be cowards and connect. We're going to be fearless and keep breaking him apart. White says, okay. You're trying to keep attacking me. I am not going to let you connect ever. You chose not to connect. You never will. Never, 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 never. Trying to get some Fosun moves in. It's like, are you sure I can't connect? And White says, yes. I'm sure you cannot connect. Probing at the corner, but also maintain the cut. Cut's big. We Atari, because we don't want this thing to settle. We are attacking a wall right now. No Ko's here. White tries to fix some shape. Now, I admit, it's a bit ugly. It's a bit ugly, but we can see the idea here, right? White wanted to leave. Black did not want to connect. So white is playing to ensure that connection never occurs. Pretty straightforward. Black faces a stone. Why? Because we just heard it. Do not ignore shoulder hits typically to your stones, and do not ignore attachments to your stone. Otherwise, you are breaking very, very basic proverbs. Poke, poke, poke. Making everyone all nice and heavy. And last but not least, escaping nice and strong. Now, I want to point out that we're not playing this one, because the only time the only time we can really start thinking about reading through here is when we have nice solid walls on either side of the one point jump. Usually we don't try to cut through the one point jump, but it's entirely possible it can be cut through if your opponent is extremely strong on both sides of the cut, or uh, uh, both sides of the one point jump. So white is being very, very careful He's not jumping right now, and he's simply extending. The upside to this is he's also threatening to finish off uh, black at the same time. I'm glad you like my basic series there, Cosmic Nana. There will be a lot of basics games coming out in November. Wait, someone played twice? There we go. Black extends. White escapes. Look how very careful he is about all these moves. Very bizarre shape, but he's being very, very careful. Black defends. You can see it's a defense because this is also available to him, right? And this area in of itself is not alive. This is dead, if we're not careful. So white push, black block, I lied, black does not block, I would have blocked because I am bad. We push first because it's sente, and then white can, I assume, right? Yeah, okay, good. Now we block, I see now. Defense Atari now? Yes. Atari. Connect. Defends this way. Why? Here's a question for all you Q players out there. Why don't we defend this cutting point? 
Why did we defend this cutting point? Why are we defending this cutting point? I mean, can't... Can't, uh... Can't white cut now? Why did we defend that cutting point and not... Why did we defend this cutting point and not the other one? Anyone have any idea? Why didn't we do that? It's a good question, I think. Why, oh why, oh why? Ah. Um, K2 will kill all, K2, what? K2. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. K2 will kill those. That's true. That's true. Oops. <laughs> I've already actually... Oh, Lyra did say it. Okay, I'm sorry, Lyra. You did say it. White's not alive? Yeah, there's a problem here, right? Remember how I mentioned just a moment ago that the two drop-downs are in trouble? Are problematic? Same thing here. How do we live from this? This is something even I can kill. And I'm terrible at life and death. It's very, very difficult to still not be dead here in the corner. Right? Very, very difficult not to be dead here in the corner. And if we try to cut before our base is secure, well, then we need a really good response for this. Because that's the best we've got right now. And that's just not enough space. So as much as we might want to cut and try to kill, regretfully we can't, so we must defend. Black attacks. Now you could say, oh, but now we can make a cutting point work, right? But now you're still in trouble because there are two groups now in trouble. There's the, or no, I guess group is a bit of a strong word, but there's the cutting group, uh, stone and the original attacking group. So if we play this, we have to understand that this is currently not connected to that, which means if you divide and conquer, one of them is probably going to die. But if we can get shape, then maybe we can. So here we are, getting some shape for ourselves. Black ignores and resumes getting pressure, or not pressure, getting a shape for his middle group. He doesn't want to be attacked any more than white does. White picks up some territory. That one stone is a group with himself. Could be, could be. All those tanuki, though. A little bit complicated in that regard, huh? And I guess more, they uh, continue to do it, just so you're aware. Like right now, that stone's ignored. White says, I'm not going to respond to that. I'm going to resume attacking your group. Why? Because it's the weakest thing on the board right now. Got ourselves some shape over here. Shape over here is not perfect. So rather than respond... Because if we do respond, we have to, re we have to recognize. Let's say, let's say we do respond. Bam, we responded. That's not Sente. So we have no idea what our opponent's going to do next. Maybe our opponent plays here. Maybe our opponent uh, defends the middle group again. We don't get to attack it. So rather than play here, White says, you know what? I want to see if I can put pressure on you again. Mm 
black makes a very, very bold statement. This is the thing that makes everyone nervous when playing Go. It's like, this doesn't have a good shape. I want to attack it again, but there is that last uh, large point on the board, as we saw that he's taking for himself now. So the question is, can we make our attack worth more than the large point? Because if we can't, then our opponent profited at our expense. Because we avoided the large point, we, ran, we went into the attack, but we didn't get enough out of it. So what do we do now? Well, we have to continue our attack. Continuing attack, continuing attack, continuing attack. Black tries to settle. I keep trying to make the players play twice. Ah, I did it again, too. Keep grabbing stones out of the wrong friggin' bowl. Extends to save a stone. Now we have a choice to make. Do we connect up or do we save our two stones? Black says, I'm going to save my two stones. Which allows white to push through. That strikes me as a rather greedy move. Uh, yes. The names on the board, the colors of the names of the board, are who's who. So we have, um, yeah, over here we've got Guli as white because his name is in white. See? Nice. Nice white group. Or text. Mm hmm. But it's not really right now. Keep in mind, though, that's not really right now. Because white attacked. Black says, I'm taking large point. White says that I'm going to split. And then black says, I'm going to try to save both simultaneously. So we've got two kind of um, greedy. We have two kind of uh, greedy ideas kind of like going back to back here. So the question is, does Ghoulie still have what it takes to try and, um, whoops, where is it? Eh, 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 there we go. Does Ghoulie still have what it takes to try to take advantage of such a player? So white cast underneath, black needs to settle, And now it's time to find out what we're going to do. White responds. Interesting, considering we don't really have a base there anymore. But we can still imagine, we can imagine that that group's not alive just yet. So we still respond. Trying to go after and seal ourselves in. Time to attack. This area here hasn't been defended. Its shape is questionable. So white tries to attack it. Black makes an interesting proposition. I'm going to take your corner. You can take my stones. Uh, thank you for saying so, Bladavia. I think it looks nicely nice too. So we have an interesting uh, exchange going on here. Corner for potentially the middle of the board. Uh, let's see. Black move. All right. There we go. 
He's even trying to remove the Aji. Even trying to remove the Aji. Making sure that his profit is actually profitable. Now, I want to ask this question, but I don't know how to phrase it, so let's just give the game away. Who thinks those three stones are really dead? And here's a hint. If you think they're not dead, what would your next move be? How expensive is the board stones and where did I get them? Uh, not very. The board has gone up in price a little bit, I think simply because um, it's a little bit harder to find boards nowadays. But this is just uh, an Agathus table board, I think it's what it's called. Uh, I forget the size exactly. And these are just glass stones. So it's pretty low budget. It's pretty low budget. I think the board is probably only like 200, maybe 250. Something like that. M17, M18. Give me a second. I have to kind of lean forward to see where those are. Uh, N18. I think the three stones are dead. Let's see, whoever said N18, congratulations. That is where we start with, or what we start with, yes. It's like, can I go under your stones and try to live? That's the first question. Can I go under? And Black says, no, you may not. Oh, rats. It's like, okay, then I'm going to extend up. Looks like small moves, right? How is this ever going to live? How are those stones ever going to live playing so small? I mean, that's not making any shape. Stupid white doesn't know what he's doing. Like, we can just throw in right now. Like, look, look where all your shape went. All of your shape just vanished. Attempts to get more shape for himself. Um, I'm missing white's or black's move, sorry. There we go. Plays the Hane. Now running into a problem. Slowly but surely running into a problem. And that problem is this one. I know it's white's I know it's black's move, but the problem is here. Black realizes he's having shape issues with his stones. He needs to really defend this. He needs to really defend this because this cutting point is being about to be protected. So he tries a gamble and he says, I'm going to protect my shape because you need to defend yourself. White says, you're right, I do. I will defend myself. Black says, and I'm going to connect. But it allows white to go underneath. So far, so good. If our opponent has to try to run on the second line, he will not survive. He will not survive. Because there's no I here, right? Because we've got the cutting point, but it doesn't really work because we could just take the one stone, and if it connects the one stone, then we connect. So these are these two uh, points here are me I, which I, my hand was completely covering up. I need, to, I need to find a better way to point. I'm sorry. Um, the cutting point here, rather, and the Atari there is uh, me I. So we have no eyes, and if we run on the second line, we're probably just going to die. So white plays the Hane. Now we're trying to get somewhere. Black plays the Atari. 
white connects. Buy a paper fan. Show the ruler or something. Yeah. The minute the minute I said that, I had a I did have a Hikaru flashback. Yeah, Sai style. Yup, 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 yup. Laser pointer? No, man, we need to go like paper fan style. All right. Whose turn is it? White just connected. Okay. That's Black's move. Now it's Black's move. But this is a little bit more complicated than you uh, might expect. We could, for example, simply play here. But there are dangers involved in this. If we play here and white follows, then this is suddenly a thing, right? It looks like there are ladders afoot. We have to be very, very careful. We have to be very, very careful. So Black says, no problem. I'm, I'm just going to de defend myself. I'm going to take all those ladders away from you, then I can go back and defend myself, and then my corner stays mine. But that's not Sente. So White gets to extend. Black follows up with the Hane. White responds uh, middle-oriented. He's not going to do the opposite. Um, what was it? He's not going to go do something like this, for example, and allow his opponent to maybe just get in, like, for Atari, making this all nice and cramped. There is kind of death in the side, so we're having more of a middle slant where we're nice and strong. Black connects. Trying to fix our shape as fast as we can. Hello, Hans. Defending the cup point because now we can see that's danger. If this goes up, it's dead, and this would now go over to here. That's a that's problematic too. For example, if we did this. And then white follows, and we defend again. Then the cut leads either directly to white stones, no matter how you look at it. So it's bad. So get rid of that, get rid of that, get rid of that. So he looked at that. So I can't defend that stone right now. I'm defending my common point instead. Now, from this game, I will tell you, it has a surprise finish. Right now, it looks like we're very um, into defending the middle. Looks like Black's getting a little bit uh, for himself on the, on the side of the board. But this game does have a surprise finish. A little bit of a surprise finish. Goes up, putting pressure on the stones over here. White just defends. Black comes up. Getting access to Dat middle. But he's under attack. The shape is not perfect yet. Shape is by no means perfect yet. Trying to keep connection. Lock out of that middle. Wait, did I got that right? No, I didn't. Sorry. Whoops. That's the small knight we're looking for. Trying to cut the small knight. 
Like, do you really have a solid connection here, Black asks. And White says, yes, I do. Black says, are you certain? Maybe I can cut you. Like, well, maybe you can, but maybe you can't. It's like, no, 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 no. Maybe. Maybe I can. But White says, maybe you can't. And Black repeats himself, like, maybe I really can. I can just Atari my way until you're dead. Atari, Atari, Atari. Alas, there's also an Atari here. So it looks like White will be fine. Black gets to take the one stone. We will add it over there to the pile. And white gets to connect. Black has to be a bit careful now. Black has to be a bit careful now. There's a group, uh, not really much. Not not really uh, much in the eye department, is it? I was thinking that white was really ahead this game, then I realized Ghoulie was actually white. Indeed. Indeed. Black, though, not giving up at all. You can see he's trying to make uh, a dual attack happen here. It's like maybe I can attack this and threaten to save this at the same time. So he's going after all the things. White says, let's simplify that by making sure that my stone's not going to uh, get captured. All right, we simplified that. Pretty easily. There's no way that's ever being disconnected. Now, it's obvious that this group is not going to go anywhere. However, living isn't that difficult. B can play H9 immediately. What is H9? Oh, I think you're looking at the cut? No. What are you looking at? H nine. Oh. Earlier after G ten. Hmm. Not so sure about that. Not so sure about that. Last up on the right. Yeah. Problem is, if we try to save this. Uh, stone too early, then this group is going to get surrounded, right? Especially we try to run it out too fast. Because you're going to picture like a white wall here as this uh, stone is escaping. So as this escapes, this follows, that gets surrounded, and then it dies. Anyway, white's move. He moves to live. And now I still want to repeat, this, this game has a bit of a surprise ending. Because no one right now would be able to predict the ending of this game. No one would be able to predict it. No one. I don't care who you are. No one would be able to look at this board right now and say, you know what, I think that's going to happen. Black goes and gets some stones for himself. Following up this finally. Some territory. Lost by time. New. Making sure we're alive. Oh, look at that. Some forcing moves. Looks, whoops. Looks like we're in endgame.
corner secured. White's nice and alive. Got to keep everything for himself. Black goes back and saves these three stones. Hmm. Okay. White makes certain he's alive there as well. Nice, uh, Lee enlarging his base. Time to get them two eyes. Them gorgeous little peepers. Connecting on up all the things. Maybe we can keep pushing. Huge, bit of a huge capture here. Those three stones not being alive anymore. Pretty big, but it's Gote. But it's Gote. Black takes these uh, three inst or two instead. He's nicely connected up. No more Aji here. Can get a stone later on for himself. Uh, they weren't dead until the follow-up. Are those glass stones? They are glass stones, yes. Now, I want to point out that Black tried to get more for himself here and here. The cost of that, the cost of that decision is he left this alone. He left this Atari in place. So black saves. White continues. You can see where this is becoming a little bit dangerous. Black saves. White gets to connect. Black defends himself, and even now, you probably still don't quite realize how this game is going to end. White continues to extend, and now suddenly we have an issue. Have to be careful of that cutting point. So we defend white just keeps reducing now everything looks pretty safe everything looks like it's safe again ask the question can I connect in sente Black says, no, you can't, you're going to die. And thus we have another fight. Probe. Or, um, yeah. Connect. Extend on out. Now this game could not get much more complicated. But it can. This move is trying to get a forcing move here to break any kind of connection over here. Because if this keeps coming out, maybe the entire middle's in trouble. They're now playing a very, very delicate balancing act with all of their groups in the center of the board. So Black says, I'm going to get strong by playing over here. Because now this is disconnected. Uh, black can play here, right? And it's going to be Sente, so it's not an eye anymore. Right? So you can see what he's trying to do, what he's setting up. He's setting up the Hane. He's setting up this Hane. He's setting up this as no eyes. 
because if this gets disconnected, then this whole group's in question again. Like, does it does it really live? How do we make that second eye? I mean, you've got a push here, and I don't know. Get rid of that stone. You're not on the board yet. White ignores it to poke. Black ignores it to poke. They're each now trying to kill each other. This game just became a little explosive. Atari threatened to kill off everything. Connect threatened to kill off everything. White takes. No. Mm. Mm. There we go. Black takes. Add to the pile. Not giving you that I in sente. Or uh, not giving you that I period, sorry. Black tries to resist being killed. White cuts. And now we have, we have a dilemma on our hands. A small dilemma, but a dilemma nonetheless. We technically, we technically just saved our stones in the middle of the board. We technically did that. That is a thing that we did. But it is very clear now that all of these stones are dead for black. They've got the one eye here. And um, that's it. So black has to counterattack now and kill off everything in the center of the board. Um, hard to do when it already has an eye and it's go tight at poke it out. In order to try to kill white, we would need a move like this in Sente. But that move is Gote. So if you try to play there, white's just going to solid his connection and he's going to be completely fine. So you can't actually kill anyone in the middle of the board. He saved his stones, but it's just not threatening enough. So black's dead and has to resign. Yep. Nice explosive finish. Black was just like, I'm going for it all. And white was like, you know what? What a coincidence. I am too. Like connect under on the left. Your left. Your left is yes. Yes. And this this connection is gote. As if we play here and we play away, the, the most black can do is play this, but we falsify that and we're fine. <laughs>